The Weatherlight Saga was a single ongoing story that lasted from 1997 to 2000. Up until then, magic stories were told separately, per set and block. Wizards of the Coast wanted to change this by having a continuing story with a cast of characters the players could follow for several years. In this video, we're going to cover the Weatherlight Saga from its beginning to its end. However, you must know a story of this size could take several hours to tell, so we'll only cover the major events that took place. But before we get started, I'd like to first thank Jay Anelli for writing the script. If you are unfamiliar with his work, please take a look at a previous video we made called A Brief History of Dominaria. He wrote that, and it will help you understand where the Weatherlight Saga fits within the entirety of Dominaria's history. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. The Weatherlight Saga would not have started without Urza, one of Magic's main protagonists, and Yogmoth, one of Magic's main antagonists. These two were in constant battle for millennia, and their final confrontation culminated at the very end of the Weatherlight Saga. For the uninitiated, Urza was a brilliant artificer from Dominaria who fought his brother Mishra in the devastating war and ascended to a planeswalker. This was during the pre-mending era, and his planeswalker abilities were some of the most powerful that ever existed in the multiverse. After Mishra's death, Urza discovered his brother was corrupted by the Phyrexians, and vowed for revenge. As for the antagonist Yogmoth, he was never a planeswalker, but a being just as powerful. He lived during the ancient Thran Empire, which made him much older than Urza. During his conquest to take over the Thran, he discovered Phyrexia and made it his home. Urza later discovered Yogmoth's millennia-long plan to invade Dominaria, and from there he dedicated his life's work into saving his home plane. His grand plan for this was the Legacy. Legends of the Weatherlight span millennia, a skyship born in the symbiosis of nature and artifice. Urza built the Weatherlight as a centerpiece of his legacy, a collection of artifacts of power for his war against Phyrexia. Made of the ever-expanding Thran metal and the seed of the oldest tree in Yavimaya, the ship's power stone core is fueled by the energies of an entire plane. Weatherlight's maiden voyage took her to Sarah's realm where her first captain, Joira, and crewmate Karn evacuated as many survivors as they could from Phyrexia's influence. Urza collapsed the realm into a massive power stone, fueling the ship's plane-shifting engines for all time. But Urza's other projects drew Phyrexia's attention, and the bloodlines he created were slaughtered, the survivors scattered. Phyrexia tipped their hand in these assaults, and Urza discovered the artificial plane of wrath a staging ground for their invasion of Dominaria. Decades later, the Weatherlight was captained by Sase, hero of the Mirage War. A descendant of Urza's bloodline project, her family too, was wiped out by the Phyrexian purges. Sisse sought the rest of the legacy as she believed it her destiny, and gathered a crew capable of such a feat. Foremost among them was Gerard Capuchin, to whom the rest of the legacy belonged. Rescued from a grisly fate as an infant by Karn, he was entrusted to Sadar Kondo of Jumora. Kondo's son Vuel grew to resent Gerard and stole the legacy, tricking Karn into killing an innocent man before freezing the golem with the touchstone. Gerard was sent to train with Multani, avatar of Yavimaya, where he befriended the Lanawar elf Raphelos, and a cat warrior named Miri. Gerard, Raphelos, and Miri would join Sisse's crew, alongside Tongarth, a Talrum Minotaur and first mate. Squee, a genius among goblins and cabin boy of the ship. Orem, who would serve as the ship's healer. Hannah, the ship's navigator and engineer, who is also the daughter of a powerful wizard named Baron, and a love interest of Gerard. And Krovax, a nobleman from the swamps of Urborg. 
For three years, they traveled Dominaria together, coming no closer to the legacy. Until an attack on Krovax's estate left Raffelos dead. The crew was saved by Krovax summoning his family's patron angel, Selenia. But upon breaking the artifact that bound her to their estate, Selenia was transported through a portal. Much of the crew disbanded in the aftermath, allowing the Evancar of Wrath to manipulate them. Sisei's first real lead on the legacy came from Stark, a native of Wrath whose daughter, Takara, had been kidnapped by the Evancar, Volrath. But before Stark can enlist Sisei's help, he's intimidated by Maraxis of Keld into betraying her instead, casting a spell that sends her right into the Evancar's clutches. Captainless, the weatherlight travels Dominaria to reunite the crew. When Gerard comes aboard, he discovers his childhood protector and friend Karn frozen below the deck and restores him with the touchstone. Karn swears a vow of pacifism for his guilt. They know Sisse was taken to Wrath, but need a native of the plane and a mage to guide them there. They're joined by the Talarian wizard Urtai, and they head off to rescue Stark, who had been captured by Maraxis. Gerard defeats Maraxis and frees Stark, unaware of what the traitor had done to Sisse. Together, they activate the Weatherlight's plane-shifting engines and head to Wrath. Things immediately go wrong. A massive sky ship, the Predator, ambushes the crew the moment they arrive. The vicious Mog Goblins swarm on board and steal pieces of the legacy, including Karn. The Predator fires on the Weatherlight, and Gerard is thrown overboard. In a rage, Tongarth leaps onto the Predator to rescue Karn. Predator's captain, Grevin Ilvek puts a stop to the rescue, capturing the Minotaur before turning both of his prisoners over to Volrath. Gerard falls to the Sky Shroud Forest below, where he finds safety among the Vec people of Wrath. Hannah and Miri lead an expedition to rescue Gerard, but are captured by the elves of Sky Shroud. They are brought before the elvish leader Eladomri, and Gerard arrives with the Vec. They negotiate a truce. Together, the groups begin to plot an assault on the center of Phyrexian power on Wrath, the Stronghold. The crew learns of a mysterious portal on Wrath. Urtai remains behind to prepare the portal for their escape, while the others rescue their allies. Using a dangerous passage, the crew infiltrates the Stronghold. Gerard, Miri, and Krovax are guided by Stark. They discover a map room with a globe of Dominaria and learn of an impending Phyrexian invasion. When they rescue Tongarth, he's been mutilated into a horrific form, but retains his mind. Karn is rescued from being used to murder helpless Mogs over and over. Meanwhile, the Sky Shroud Elves of Vec launch their attack on the Stronghold. The crew kills Shapeshifter after Shapeshifter as they journey through the Stronghold until Miri and Krovax are attacked by Selenia. Miri is knocked out while Krovax lands a fatal blow on his beloved angel, destroying her and dooming himself to a vampiric curse. Tongarth rescues them both while Gerard and Stark venture onward. Elsewhere, Karn negotiates with the Sliver Queen, showing her the legacy is as much a part of him as the Slivers are of her. She agrees and reluctantly allows him to take her prize. Gerard and Stark eventually confront Volrath, who has enthralled Stark's daughter Takara. Takara blinds her father in combat, but when Volrath flees from Gerard, she regains her freedom. Gerard pursues and slays Volrath, but his foe turns out to be yet another shapeshifter. The battle outside the stronghold rages as the elves and Vec are joined by the other races of Wrath. Their assaults win entry into the stronghold. 
Back at the Weatherlight, Tongarth returns Miri and Krovax to Orem for healing, before charging back into the stronghold for vengeance. Karn returns with another piece of the legacy, and Hannah discovers it fits into the ship's engines, boosting the ship's top speed. Krovax awakes, and with the dark curse upon him, attempts to sabotage the ship. However, Miri sees Krovax and confronts him. Gerard finds and rescues Sisse from the stronghold, but as they rendezvous with the weatherlight, Gerard finds Miri and Krovax engaged in combat. Both the vampire and cat warrior tumble off the deck. Gerard goes down to save Miri, but is attacked by Grevenilvec. Making the hard choice, Miri lets Krovax kill her so that Gerard and the rest of the crew can escape. The Weatherlight easily outpaces the Predator, and Urtai opens the portal. As the ship flies through, Urza appears and closes the portal before the Predator can pursue, leaving Urtai stranded on Radoth. So far, we've gone through the stories of Weatherlight and Tempest Block. Urza Block would release next. Its story is a prequel to the Weatherlight Saga, revealing the origins of the legacy and giving more context to the Phyrexian invasion. For this video, we will not cover the stories of Urza Block. Instead, we're going to cut right to Mercadian Masks, which continues the story from where it left off at the end of Tempest Block. The Weatherlight crash lands on the plain of Mercadia. The main crew, plus Stark and Takara, disembark to figure out a way to repair the ship. Much to their chagrin, it's swept away on a massive tidal wave. With no way of tracking it, they head to the city of Mercadia for help. In exchange for aid, Gerard agrees to train Mercadia's hopelessly incompetent soldiers. Back on the ship, Orem and the wounded are deposited in the Cho Arim forest. There, she is greeted by the leader of the Cho Arim, Cho Mano, with whom she begins to fall in love. The Cho Arim are rebels against the tyrannical Mercadians, a fact that the rest of the crew is unaware of when they arrive leading the Mercadian army. Gerard is horrified by the Mercadians' brutality killing the leader of the mercenary force to stop them. Gerard, Karn, and Tongarth are imprisoned by the Mercadians for this crime. Squee is elevated among the Karen, the secret society of goblins that control Mercadia. With his newfound power, he has his friends freed. Orem, Hanna, and Sisse begin searching for the mythical bones of Ramos, a part of Urza's legacy. The crew reunites, and they meet the dragon engine Ramos, who brought many of the people of Mercadia to this world from Dominaria. He gifts the Weatherlight his power stones, known as the Bones of Ramos. Chomano launches his revolution against the Mercadians, and Squee discovers that the Kirin are working with Phyrexia to build a fleet of warships like the Predator. Beneath the city are massive caverns, where the Weatherlight has been captured. Takara is revealed to have been Volrath in disguise all along, and he pursues the crew as they reclaim the Weatherlight and escape. Volrath's craft is destroyed, and the crew believes him dead. The Weatherlight, having undergone a tremendous amount of upgrades with pieces of the Legacy installed, is able to take them all back home to Dominaria. Back on Wrath, Eladomri's daughter has been transformed into the Phyrexian Belby to determine who shall be the new Evan Carr. Krovax, now fully vampiric, quickly claims leadership of Wrath for himself. Urtai, stranded on Wrath, is captured by Grevin and turned over to Belby. Belby grows close to Urtai, and the two begin to plan an escape using a secret portal that has been reprogrammed to take just a handful of people to Dominaria. Unfortunately, Volrath's return forces the contest for Evancar. As Volrath and Krovax battle to the death, Urtai assists Krovax by putting Volrath off balance, securing the victory to Krovax. After his defeat, Volrath's Phyrexian implants were removed, revealing him to be Vule, 
Gerard's childhood friend, and he was executed. The people of Wrath, having been beaten back on their last assault, launch a careful mission that ends in Eladomri killing his corrupted daughter. Eladomri activates his daughter's portal and escapes to Dominaria with the real Takara and Lin Sivi. Urtai, having been abandoned yet again, submits to the new Evankar and transforms into an agent of Phyrexia. Meanwhile, the Keldons of Dominaria believe their end of days prophecy, known as Twilight, is finally coming to pass. They invade northern eastern Jamora, and Hannah's mother, Rain, is killed in the short lived war. The Weatherlight crew returns to Dominaria and sets a course for Benalia City. They find a cold welcome as Gerard, who had abandoned his post to rescue Sisse, is arrested. Before they can explain their case, the Phyrexian invasion begins in earnest. The city is quickly overrun. The crew barely escapes from the Phyrexian general Sabo Tavuk. With Benalia conquered, Tavuk is deployed elsewhere. All over Dominaria, portals open to Wrath and begin disgorging Phyrexians. Plagues are unleashed upon the unsuspecting populace. Eladomri arrives with Lin Sivi and Takara. They head to Lanawar and help with the fight. The Elfame is quickly overrun by plague, and they guide the people to safety of caverns below. Hannah contracts a Phyrexian plague during a rescue mission. Orem vows to cure her using everything in her power. She creates an inoculation against the illness, but is unable to reverse Hannah's symptoms. Hannah passes away. But with this new immunity to the Phyrexian plague, the Weatherlight heads to Lanoir and finds their old friend, Eladomri. Urza's plans finally come to fruition. He attempts to enlist the aid of his former student, the Planeswalker Teferi. Teferi, wary of Urza, instead phases out his homeland of Zalfir. On Shiv, Teferi phases out his friend Joyra's homeland as well. On Yavamaya, Multani battles wave after wave of invading Phyrexians. With the help of Gaia, Dominaria's world soul, he manages to stay one step ahead. The war for Dominaria turns to the Caves of Koilos, home of the original gate to Phyrexia. Urza enlists the aid of eight other planeswalkers, beings of power with a stake in Dominaria's survival. Among these are Tevesh Zot, draconic villain and doom of fools, Taser of Rabia, and his adopted daughter Daria, Freyli's goddess of Lanoir, Panther warrior Lord Windgrace of Urborg, the smuggler Bo Levar, the scholar Commodore Guff, and Christina of the Woods. Together with Urza, they were called the Nine Titans, and they had massive Titan engines for their use. Urza's armies assemble to meet Sabo Tabak's army at Koilos. Thousands of genetically engineered Metathran warriors throw themselves at the Phyrexian forces. The Metathran general Thaddeus is captured and vivisected. The dragon nations led by Daragaz battle artificial dragon engines in the skies. Nine titan engines crush scores of Phyrexians with every step, but still they keep coming. In the midst of this, Hannah's father, Baron, learns that she has died. Worse, that Urza kept it from him. He returns her body to Tilaria and lays her to rest next to her mother. As Phyrexians invade the island, he obliterates it, and himself, completely. The tide doesn't turn until the Weatherlight arrives with reinforcements. Gerard leads the charge into the caverns. 
But once inside, the crew is overwhelmed. Karn is forced to make a choice. His commitment to pacifism or the lives of all those he holds dear. With terrible purpose, he wades into battle. In the caverns, he rescues his friends and rips the limbs from Savu Tavuk, forcing her to retreat. The battle won, the gate to Phyrexia is destroyed. Celebrations are cut short, as the true purpose of Wrath becomes clear. The artificial plane is overlaid on Dominaria, unleashing the entirety of Phyrexia's might all at once. The stronghold appears on a volcano on Urborg. Sabu Tavuk returns to Krovax, but for her failure, she is slaughtered. Tavash Zat whispers to Daragaz about the might of the primeval dragons, and the dragon leader begins resurrecting them one after another, but with each dragon he falls under their sway more and more, until he is revealed to be the final primeval reincarnated. The dragons are furious at humanity's dominance over what was once their plane, and rather than aid in the fight against Phyrexia, they turn on Daragaz's former allies. Eladomri and his allies are brought to Keld by Freilis, where Sky Shroud has manifested. In exchange for aiding the Keldans, Freilis agrees to protect the forest from Keld's frigid mountains. The prophesied Keldan twilight comes true, and their honored dead are reborn from their necropolis. But rather than aiding them against Phyrexia, it was Phyrexian magic that restored them. They turn on their living descendants, and the Keldan and Elvish forces are routed. The Weatherlight crew seeks allies from Tongarth's people, the Talrum Minotaurs. But when they arrive, they find the entire mountain range gone, phased out with Zalfir. They travel to Herloon instead, where Tongarth rescues the Minotaurs from Phyrexian experimentation, expecting them to find him repulsive. Tongarth is surprised that they instead revere their savior. The main battle turns to Urborg and the Stronghold. The Metathran general Agnate is led astray by the Lich Lord Dralnu, who reminds Agnate of his fallen brother Thaddeus. Dralnu secretly infects Agnate with a rotting disease, intent of taking control of the Metathran army. When the Weatherlight arrives with allies from Herloon, the Minotaur commander Grizzlegom slays Dralnu. The Nine Titans' assault of Phyrexia begins, but quickly falls apart. Tavash Zat kills Daria and Christina of the Woods. Urza had planned for this, and activates a kill rubric he built into Zat's Titan engine. He needed a justification to drain a planeswalker and create the ultimate bomb. Taysir is distraught at the death of his daughter, and when it becomes clear Urza has begun to fall under Phyrexia's sway, he too is murdered by Urza. The other planeswalkers abandon their booby-trapped titan engines as Urza descends deeper into Phyrexia. When the Predator engages the Weatherlight again, it proves no longer a match for the constantly evolving Skyship. Urtai teleports aboard the Weatherlight, abducting Gerard and Squee. The rest of the crew shoot down the Predator, and it crashes into the Stronghold. The crew is beset by the reborn primevals, and is forced to land. They find safety amongst the Treefolk of Yavimaya, who have come hunting the primeval that was once their prisoner. Multani joins the fight, unleashing a five-mile swath of Yavimaya on Urborg. Inside, Krovax makes an appeal to Gerard. Yogmoth can return Hannah to him and murders Squee to prove it. The goblin is resurrected by Yogmoth's magic. Gerard, desperate to see his lost love again, travels through a portal to Yogmoth's inner sanctum. Squee is killed again, but is once again reborn. Confused and annoyed by being unable to kill the goblin, 
Krovax gifts Squee to Urtai to torture for eternity. On Phyrexia, Gerard finds Urza in an arena on the Ninth Sphere. There, Yogmoth's avatars bid them to fight for Phyrexia's favor, the winner gaining a boon from Yogmoth and the leadership of the invasion. Urza's powers are stripped from him to make the fight fair. While Gerard constantly innovates new strategies using the tools they are given, Urza's abilities continually overwhelm him. Above them, the remaining titans continue planting their bombs. Commodore Guff is killed, changing fate to give the Weatherlight crew a fighting chance against Yagmoth. Eladomri and the Keldons arrive to the aid of the Weatherlight crew, and they join Grizzlegum's Minotaurs and the Metathran in an assault on the Stronghold. Urtai's repeated torture and murder comes to an end when Squee, resurrected once more, accidentally kills him. As the Primevals renew their assault, Daragaz realizes what he has become, and casts himself into a volcano to break the spell. The other primevals are weakened, and the Weatherlight breaks free. On Phyrexia, Gerard finally gains the upper hand and beheads Urza with a soul-piercing blade. When Yogmoth delivers Hannah to him, he realizes she's a fake, and strikes out at her. With Urza's head in tow, he flees back through the gateway to the stronghold, where the final battle with Krovax ends with the vampire's death. Gerard and Squee escape with the help of the allied forces assaulting the stronghold. Yogmoth emerges through the portal in the stronghold, manifesting as a giant death cloud, spanning half the globe. Bolivar realizes he doesn't stand a chance, and rather than flee, he sacrifices himself to protect a small merfolk colony. The Weatherlight crew, reunited again, decide to use the power of the Null Moon to attempt to defeat Yogmoth. The ship cracks open the ancient Thran device and channels millennia worth of white mana into the Dark God of Phyrexia. But it isn't enough. Urza's head reveals a final, desperate plan to Gerard, the Legacy Weapon. Below the deck, Gerard removes Urza's Power Stone and plants them into Karn. The legacy weapon activates, creating a blast so powerful that Yogmoth attempts to flee to Phyrexia, but the Alliance has destroyed the gateway. The dark god of Phyrexia is wiped out, and in the aftermath, Karn ascends as a planeswalker. Some time later, a memorial was erected on Urborg. Their survivors are all in attendance to honor those who fell. Karn takes Orem back to Mercadia to reunite with her love, Cho Mano. Freilis becomes Protector of the Sky Shroud, and Lord of Windgrace vows to stamp out any lingering Phyrexian influence on Urborg. Sisse is gifted a new ship called the Victory, and Tongarth and Squee join her crew, beginning a new adventure. That's the tale of the Weatherlight Saga. Of course, the Weatherlight has been rebuilt in the story of the latest Dominaria set, and Joyra returns as its captain. New adventures await, and who knows, there might be another Weatherlight Saga. This has been DJ talking to you all about the Weatherlight Saga. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like some more content specifically about the Commander format, go ahead and check out my channel, Jumbo Commander. We do some great deck techs, and I think you might enjoy it a lot. Please give this video a like, maybe a comment, subscribe to the channel, but most of all, thank you so much for watching.